left the apartment yet, Mr. Parnell. Yes, sir, we'll stay right with him. Ellen, this is David Fenton. I need to see Mr. Harper as soon as possible. 10 o'clock? Perfect, Ellen. Thank you. I'll be there. David, I understand how difficult it is for you to go back to Daddy, but I know he'll loan you the money. It isn't asking for the money that bothers me. It's the fact that I didn't tell him about the loan shark. And thanks to my blurting it out, the news is hardly going to come as any great surprise. Great way to start the morning, huh? Sweetheart, I know he won't make it difficult. But it's worth it. Pay off, Parnell. Tempa Sportswear will be in the black again. Hey, hey, hey. Did I keep you up last night? You look tired. Oh, don't say that. I have a Sports Illustrated reshoot at 10 o'clock. Can you believe the lab losing an entire roll of film? No. <laughs> anyway, will you call me as soon as you and Daddy are through? Yeah, of course. OK. Now, what time do you meet Sarah? Oh, around 1 o'clock. We're going to go shopping for baby after the shoot. You know, you didn't eat any breakfast. David, you are sounding like my father. I'm all right. Hey, I've never had a baby before. You let me do some of the worrying, too. I've never had a baby before either, and I'm not worried. And you're going to be late. It'll take you at least two minutes to catch a cab. You look very professional. And then you... By the way, I get the feeling I'm being asked to leave. We, we got a sexy milkman or something? My fruit salad awaits. Goodbye, darling. expecting a negligee? Well, let's see. The first time we met, you wore a towel. The second time, a cocktail dress to a barbecue joint. And with your track record, I'm never sure. Yeah, I'd love some. They do seem to be wearing more and more each time we meet. Been wondering how it would all end. I've been wondering the same thing. Have you? Well, off and on. Would you like something to eat? Well, only fruit. No oysters. I didn't think we'd need them. Now, I've made up a list here of people I think you should talk to for your article. Uh, since it's a Newsbeat cover story, only the best, of course. <clears throat> and I know everyone personally, so if you need any information. Grayson Carr, Online Magazine, Dinah Caswell, Lori Caswell, Taryn Blake. The old and the new expectations girls. You handle both of them. I have a very uh, close relationship with Harper Cosmetics. I'm sure you do. Nick and I, uh, we grew up with uh, Marty Brickman in the neighborhood, you know. We had kids together, went to school, played ball. Your old friend turned out to be a loan shark, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but now I got to pay him back. Listen, Grant, I don't want a handout, not even a loan. I, uh, I'd like to make you a proposition. Go ahead. I need enough to pay off my debts and to have some working capital. Hmm? $500,000, and I will give you 50% of Tempest for collateral. Interest? 10% over three years. Now, I know the prime is much higher than that, but... Oh, that's fair enough. But, uh, I have a better proposition. I want to buy Tempest, make it a part of Hopper Worldwide, retaining you as president, of course. I can't sell my company. You won't be letting it go. You'll be going with it. But I started it. I mean, uh, I built this up from... I know, I know. That's why I want you with it. And I'm willing to pay three million dollars for the privilege. Well, what do you say? I, 
I'm sorry, Grant, but, uh, I mean, I appreciate the offer. It's very flattering, but, uh, you know, uh, Tempest stays mine. Grant, thanks for your time. One million for 51% of Tempest. And I pay off your loan sharks. 50% and I retain complete creative control. Like Harper Worldwide has just acquired a new division. And I'll have legal get started on the paperwork right away. Now, how much immediate cash do you need? Uh, 250,000, plus whatever interest I pay them, I thought an additional uh, 10,000 ought to cover. Better make it 25, huh? That's more likely to keep them quiet. Helen? Yes, Mr. Harper. Tell accounting to have $275,000 in cash ready for Mr. Fenton. He'll pick it up in, no oh, five minutes, huh? Now, why don't you take care of this payoff right away, and then come back here this afternoon. There's a staff meeting at 4. I'd like you to be there. I have a meeting at the appointment. Yeah, well, see if you can change it, huh? Got to start getting acquainted with some of the people that you'll be working with around here. I'll see what I can do. Good. something else for there. Mm. Mm. Thanks again for coming back in. Yeah, not everybody would have done that. My pleasure. Oh. Oh. Hey, if it isn't the king himself. Hello, Blair. It's good to see you. Bernard, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I'm shooting a cover. But I got a feeling yours is going to outsell mine. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, are the Knicks going to get us the championship this season? It's a lock. Whether or not Larry Bird retires. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Take it easy, Blair. Okay, have fun. Bye bye. Thanks. You all right? Oh, I'm fine. Sammy, I'm fine. Great. Great. Stay that way. Thanks again for coming in. My pleasure. Okay, Sandy, what else? Dinah Caswell on two. Mm, Sandy, get me some coffee, okay, darling? Hello, Dinah, how are you? And Laurie? I'm fine. Laurie's a little tired. She uh, has her SATs next week. Well, they, they are terribly strenuous, aren't they? Um, Dinah, I have wonderful news. Now, I have managed to convince Wesley to release Laurie to David Fenton for his next shoot. And believe me, it was not easy. Oh, well, that's wonderful. But I'm not even sure that we really wanted to model one day a week, much less two. Michael and I are worried that our grades are going to suffer. I guess I'll just have to cancel that booking. Of course, uh, David will be terribly hurt, but... Well, I, uh... Oh, maybe this time it won't matter. I mean, I know Lori will be delighted. Oh, good. Well, Dinah, I'll firm up the date and uh, send the contracts over by Monday, okay? Oh, and Dinah, now there's a journalist from Newsbeat magazine, a Mark Bailey. He'd like to talk to you for this article he's writing. Maybe next time you're in town. All right. Fine. Thank you, darling. 
Bye bye. Sandy, what the hell are SATs? Uh, that's some kind of test to get into college, I think. College? Laurie Caswell isn't going to have time to go to college. She's going to be too busy working for me. Well, maybe when she's 30. Go get them tonight, guys. Bye. Bye. We got them there, Steve. Yes. Good luck, Steve. That's great. Good luck. Good luck, Steve. <laughs> Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. Whoa. Oh, ho, ho. We're going to win tonight. The oh, team is on a roll. Yeah, we're going to burn them out, huh? Red Red is to the top. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you can't lose. I'll be there. I was waiting to hear that. Now that is a set of wheels. John Waite's concert and two backstage passes. You get to meet John Waite? Oh, Taryn, this is Jenna. Hi, it's, um, it's nice to meet you. I've seen your picture. Oh, thanks. And this is Steve. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? Good, good. Yeah, John gave me the tickets himself, and there's gonna be a party afterwards. So do you think you could ditch school for the rest of the day and come home with me? Because the concert starts at 8. Tonight, I can't. Um, Steve has a basketball game. But you can go to a game any night. I mean, Tonight, you're going to meet John Waite. I know, but Steve's playing, and it's really important. Steve, please. You don't mind if she doesn't go to the game, do you? Huh. She's right. There'll be other games. Go meet John Waite. You sure? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Oh, great! I ain't missing you at all. Not since you've been awake. intelligent man, Mr. Fenton. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Right. Well, enjoy it, because you won't get another chance. Here it is, $250,000 with an additional $25,000 for your time and your trouble. It is not usual for my company to make any kind of adjustment to the interest you owe. But you'll accept this, Parnell, because that's all you're going to get. your visit to Grant Harper's this morning proved profitable. Hey, I know you've been having me followed. You can call him off now. I hope so. You know, the world we operate in is a small one. A man has to be careful about the people he does business with. Hey, Parnell, spare me the lecture, will you? I won't be bothering you again. I was referring to your visit to the district attorney's office. Oh, I know it can be explained as a purely social call. Sarah Frank is your lovely wife's closest friend, after all. But a second visit, or a third, that might be misinterpreted. Please see that it doesn't happen again. Shopping for baby clothes is so much more fun than just shopping. I am still reeling from that christening gown. A thousand dollars? Not to mention the matching bonnet for a mere 350. Such a deal. Hey, don't rich babies fit up like regular babies? Yes, but they also <laughs> don't wear their christening gown every day either. Uh, Come on, let's go to FAO Shorts. Okay.
You know, in the unlikely event that I ever have a baby, I think I'll do my shopping at Bloomies. Shouldn't you think about marrying Mark first? We have thought about it. I guess neither one of us has the guts to make that kind of commitment. Well, marrying David was the best thing I ever did. Yeah, the David is not always racing off to the nearest international war zone. That's true. Speaking of Mark, how's the fashion story coming? Has he talked to Racine yet? Several times. He says that she's a cross between Lucretia Borgia and Attila the Hun. <laughs> I think he likes her. Oh, really? How much? Oh, no. That is one woman that I don't have to lose any sleep over. She's uh, not exactly Mark's type. I know, I know. Daddy thinks I'm crazy to like her, but I do. Speaking of crazy, you should see the dollhouse that he's building for the baby. It's enormous. What if it's a boy? Oh, no. With my father, there's no negotiating. Uh, you know, if he wants a girl, it'd better, better be a be girl. A girl. <laughs> You haven't forgotten, have you? We're taking the heartbreaker over to the Bahamas. Oh, <laughs> of course I haven't forgotten. That was my idea, remember? It's been too long since we've had a vacation together, huh? It's been five years, Grant. I'm really counting on this one happening. Well, it will. I promise. Can't be home early tonight, though. This man's coming all the way from Zurich. Very important meeting. Sorry, sweetheart. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, uh, you've had the bad news, now here's the good. I'm bringing David into Harper Worldwide. Mm, I had a feeling you might try. Ever since you bought those silk mills in Italy. <laughs> you know me too well, don't you? Just an inspired guess. I hope, Grant, that, you, that you'll let David run Tempest his own way with, without interference. Well, I might uh, give him a little help now and then. In the beginning, a little uh, green in a few areas. He learns real fast. He's got a lot of ambition. Does Wesley know? He'll find out this afternoon. I'm sure he'll be thrilled. I won't do him any harm to have a little competition. <laughs> Don't you think he has enough keeping up with you? I know you think that Wesley could run this company, but uh, he's not ready yet. Too soft. Had it too easy. And David came up the hard way. Just like you. Yes. Yes, that's right. Wesley has the education and, and the business experience you gave him. Don't dismiss him so lightly. Oh, I'm not dismissing him. But David has the drive. He has to succeed. Because there's nobody standing behind him, ready to pick up the pieces if he fails. Except you. David, want to speak to Racine? Nobody wants to speak to Racine. Be right back, Bill. I'll take it in my office. Racine, did you talk to Wesley? Darling, would I be calling if I hadn't talked to Wesley? Of course I talked to him. And I talked to Dinah, and... And what? Do I get Lori Coswell or not? David, this was not easy. Believe me, now you owe me a big, big favor. But yes, I got you Lori Caswell. Right! But only for one day. What do you mean, one day? What is that? I need her for fittings. I need to work out ideas. Ah, oh, damn Wesley Harper. He knows that I need her for more than one day. I know, I know, darling. And that's why I've just been racking my brain trying to come up with a solution for you. And what's the solution? David, think two on a date. Two on a what? Well, it's very simple, really, and perfect for Tempest. Now, you already have the campus shoot you did with Lori. How about Tempest girl meets Tempest boy on a date? I like it. Yeah, I like it. It needs some thinking through, but... Uh... Now, of course, it's very important that the boy be someone really special. <laughs> and you just happen to have a boy that's really special, right? How did you guess, darling? 
His name is Christopher York, and he's a real fine David. Great face, wonderful body, and very tall. Right. Well, I'm sure he's exactly what we want. Um, send his pictures over, right? And and Racine. Thanks. It's a great idea. Fine. Thanks, darling. Alice? Wesley, I've been trying to reach you all morning. Oh, Wesley. Always good to see you. Uh, I'm sure you all know my son-in-law, David Fenton. Oh, David. And I'm sure you're wondering why he's here at a staff meeting. So before we move on to today's agenda, I have something important to announce. Harper Worldwide has just purchased Tempest Sportswear Incorporated. An interest in Tempest Sportswear. <laughs> right. <laughs> but a very healthy interest. <laughs> David will continue as president of the company, of course. Now, in addition to the purchase price, I am allocating an initial budget of $5 million to cover startup costs. $5 million? And that's just initially. Young fashions seem to be a growth industry. Harper should be in on it. What about Harper Cosmetics? I am starting Tangier domestically. I'm expanding into Europe with expectations. We're going to be in direct competition for funds. No, no, no competition, Wesley. Tempest and Harper Cosmetics are two different divisions of Harper Worldwide. Each will receive whatever funds are needed. Fine. Fine, then I will need five million for the European promotion and to launch Tangier. Wesley, we've already poured $17 million into expectations in Europe. But that's all the more reason why we should not stop You're right doing now. a fine job with a line here in the U.S., but we must rethink Europe. As far as the Tangier line is concerned, I'll allocate three million. Now, let's get on with the agenda. New acquisitions, apart from Trevor Sportsway. Uh, Leonard, what are your feelings on the uh, Australian publishing group? Well, congratulations. I think it looks very positive, Grant. Oh, they have made thank you, Wesley. Outlets already established I hope it's the right move for Tempest. And in the Far East. That's not what I meant. Forget all that stuff about young fashions being a growth industry. The only reason you're sitting here is because you were lucky enough to get my sister pregnant. I really... Oh, I don't have anything to wear. Taryn, you must have something. You have enough clothes here to fill the third floor of sacks. What do you think? Well, it's okay. Yeah. Give me a mic and John will think I'm Boy George. <laughs> oh. Lori, what am I going to do? Oh, my goodness. What is going on here? Mother, I don't have anything to wear. Oh, please. What about this? She doesn't want to look like a suburban teenager. <sighs> Darling, what about the Nina Ricci? Mother, it's a rock concert. I know it's a rock concert. The Green Fendi. I look 12 in that. This. With matching shoes. It'll be wonderful. Laurie, would you make yourself useful, darling? In the top drawer, there's some copper beaded earrings. Would you get them for me? Darling, look at this. It'll be wonderful on you. Why all this fuss over a rock singer? I'll never know. Mm, I love you. What would I do without you? I don't know. By the way, young lady, I will be picking you up at 10.30 at the latest. I have to be with the lawyers for an hour or so, and then I have to be back here for an appointment with a journalist from Newsbeat. Are you listening to me? Yes. Good. Have a good time. And keep your zipper zipped. Yes, Mother. Goodbye. <laughs> Look, go make sure she's gone and get that red fox great coat out of her closet. OK. Do you think I should lighten it? Oh, sure. Then you can buy matching fur coats just like Racine. 
<laughs> David gets five million dollars for that tacky little sportswear line of his to cover startup costs. Like that? Grant's giving him free reign with Tempest, which is a damn sight more than he's ever given me with a cosmetics division. Wesley, be reasonable, darling. Grant is not going to let David control Tempest. He's going to let David think he's controlling Tempest, that's all. But he still owns 50% of the company. He's still the president of the company. Titles are cheap. Wesley, you know, you have a wonderful opportunity here if you want to use it. Now, you already gave him Lori for his shoot. Why not try giving him all the help you can? Give him the benefit of your advice. Encourage him to expand. Encourage him to spend. I've got a meeting with Grant this evening. I'm going to tell him exactly, exactly what he's expecting to hear. That buying Tempest was the biggest mistake of his life. But, being a good little company man that I am, well, I'll do everything I can to help David out. The most loving brother-in-law ever. In fact, maybe $5 million isn't enough to start with. Maybe Grant should give David more. 10, 15. That's right. Tempest Sportswear moves into menswear, daytime, evening wear, high fashion. No way in the world that David's going to be able to handle all that. The fall flat on his face. This doesn't have any experience. He doesn't have me.
seen these projections on Tempest for marketing? Yes, I have. Uh, Tempest Sportswear is just ripe for expansion. The timing couldn't be better. Well, I think you're wrong, Father. Tempest is a small sportswear company. I think it should stay that way. David's already been in trouble financially. What makes you think it won't happen again? Oh, I just need a little backing, that's all. That's why I got Hopper Worldwide involved. Of course, it has nothing to do with the fact that Blair is expecting your first grandchild, does it? I suppose it's only natural for you to think that, but you're wrong. Try to put your personal feelings aside for a moment. If David had no interest whatsoever in Tempest, and you had these kind of projections in your hand, wouldn't you go ahead with the expansion? What if Tempest wasn't owned by David? Yeah, probably. But David's a good man. Might not have your experience, but, well, just look how he's brought this company along. And up until now, with no outside help, just his own talent and ambition. Maybe you're right. It's not that I dislike David particularly. I, I still think his business experience is minimal. Still, he is family. I'll do what I can to help his transition here and his expansion. You have my word on that. Oh, that's wonderful, Wesley, wonderful. In fact, I've already started. I loaned out Laurie Caswell to him for his first shoot. Now, that's the kind of attitude I'd like to see between the two of you all the time. Mr. Harper, Ken just came in from the airport with the Swiss gentleman. Will you meet him downstairs? Yes, I will. Thank you. Ah, glad we talked. You coming out to Foxtown over the weekend? I don't think so. I've got a lot of work to do on Tangier. Mm. And don't worry about David. I'll be right behind him all the way. Good night, Wesley. Good night, Father. I really appreciate you coming all the way from Zurich, Dr. Zwan. I only hope I can be of some help. Well, in reviewing the records Dr. Van Adams was kind enough to send me, I have to concur with his diagnosis of your daughter's problem, Mr. Harper. And with his treatment. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Zwan, you're considered to be the foremost specialist on obstetric problems. Now, are you sure that there's nothing else we can do? constant element of risk. That's what worries me. Yes, I can understand that. Dr. Van Adams, what are your observations? Blair's been under a lot of tension recently. Things have been going badly with her husband's business. And in her condition, any amount of stress must be avoided. Yes, certainly to guarantee delivery of a healthy child. It's my daughter's health that concerns me most. Well, then perhaps it's better that Blair comes to my sanatorium in Zurich. Does it have to be Zurich, Doctor? I think we all agree that Blair needs a balanced diet, exercise, plenty of rest, but most important of all, no pressure. In Switzerland, I guarantee she will get that. If she stays in New York, who can say? Of course, he would stay in close contact with you. When would she have to leave? The sooner, the better. I'll make the arrangements. Very well. I shall expect to hear from you, Doctor, and I do thank you for your professional courtesy. Privileged to meet you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, one thing, do you anticipate any problem with Mr. Fenton? No, I don't think so, Doctor Swan. But nothing would prevent me from doing what's best for my daughter. thinking about it's been good Dinah. but lately I miss you I'm right here well see, I'd rather 
you're over here. <laughs> it's been so long since we've had an evening alone together that I've forgotten how to behave. What do you mean you've been missing me lately? Well, when you and Lori get into it about whatever model shoot she had that day, when you talk to Racine on the phone, you sound so businesslike. And I wonder if Stonehurst is getting too small. No, I love it. Besides, that's not what you're really asking, is it? Probably not. No, I was remembering how you were a part of that whole world when we first met. And how desperate you were to get away from those people. That's right. I was. I learned my lesson. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not gonna lie to you, though. I love being part of that world. I love being part of it again. But I have some distance now. They won't hurt me again. Or Lori, or us. So you're stuck with me, Mr. Caswell, like it or not. I like it, Mrs. Caswell. Just like it? Love it. I love you. When is the animal due back? Not until tomorrow. She's she's spending the night with the cats. <laughs> Are you sure that she is safe alone in a house with Julia Blake? Of course I am. Huh? The question is, are you safe alone in the house with me? <laughs> Taryn Blake is the world's top teenage fashion model. I checked Newsbeat's research file on her. She's made quite a leap from baby food ad 16 years ago. <laughs> we have come a long way. But not far enough for you, I gather. I suppose Hollywood will be your next move? Taryn does enjoy acting. As a matter of fact, I've arranged for her to take private classes. I'd like her to study. Oh, I understood there was already a film in the works. One of Lee Herbert's soft porn offerings. Lee Herbert? He capitalized on Taryn's name. I've advised my lawyers to sue, and I'm surprised a journalist of your standing hasn't got more reliable sources. I have to consider all sources. Mm. Maybe you could explain the suspension of her contract with Harper Cosmetics. Expectations? I'm responsible for it, and I insisted on it. Wesley Harper is a ruthless, terrible man, and he pushed my daughter to the edge of exhaustion. I told Grant Harper that she was taking a six-month vacation. Redlands Hospital seems a strange choice for vacation. I said she was exhausted. Then there's no truth to the rumor that Taryn attempted suicide. None at all. You know how many young girls are exploited and abused in this fashion industry. But my daughter has an advantage over all of them, you see. She has me to protect her. Yes, you've mentioned how close you are several times. Well, Mrs. Blake, I appreciate your time. I expect to see my daughter prominently featured in your article. And I'm just sorry she wasn't here tonight to meet you. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. You said something about schoolwork? Yes. She was studying all day for a science exam, so she spent the night with a friend of hers. I'm sure they're both sound asleep by now. Come on, John, give her another kiss. Hey, great. Do it again, John. Taryn Blake, John Waite, hot new couple. What a great new romance. Oh, she was a very steak, and I'm wiped out. <laughs> Hello there. Would you like something to drink? No, thank you. Oh. Oh. Okay. Hi. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Thanks. I sort of feel weird saying no all the time, but I don't drink very much. You shouldn't drink at all. It'll get you in trouble. What'd you say your name was? Laurie? Earl Slick, lead guitar? Yeah, I know. So you're gonna come to the press party later? We can't. We have to go home. In fact, we're really late now. Well, if you think you're gonna get Taryn away from John, you better think again. How old are you, anyway? Old enough? Why, how old are you? <laughs> Probably too old. Well, you're not so very old. <laughs> I'm Julia Blake, Taryn Blake's mother. Taryn? What are you doing? Mother, what are you doing here? I told you I'd be here at 10.30 to pick you up. I'm here and I'm ready. Something like this would happen if I let her spend any time with you. Since it's so late tonight, you may stay the night. But this is the last time you're going to go anywhere with my daughter. To new beginnings, or something corny like that? To new beginnings. Tempest and Harper Worldwide. I just hope I can hold your father off long enough till the new line comes out. David, Daddy's gonna be wonderful. Why don't you just wait and see? Look, he may not know that much about the fashion industry, but he is a terrific businessman. And he has great ideas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've got an idea. Do you think that I could carry you and Junior <laughs> off to bed? You can oh, try. Oh. That's probably Graham with one of his brilliant business ideas. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. David, it's Sarah. Listen, I'm sorry to call you at this hour, but I didn't want to let this go until tomorrow. I'm uh, still at the office here with my boss. It's about Parnell. Parnell, what about? I paid him off. I made a deposition for the grand jury, and I said I would testify as long as they kept my name out of it. Now what? Albany has just notified us that the State Crime Commission wants a full hearing. They've also notified Parnell's attorneys. David, this means that the hearing will be held in open court. I'm really sorry. That's what you're telling me, Counselor. If David Fenton testifies against me, I'm looking at 10 to 15 years. I understand. But I'll just have to see that Fenton doesn't testify against me. New Year, the big game won't be at the Rose Bowl. It'll be in the Rose Garden. Catch every episode of Pasadena with host and star player Dana Delaney. The Pasadena Cereal Bowl, Monday, January 2nd, starting at 11, only on SoapNet.